Hey everyone, so uh, let's talk stories and uh, uh, the book I'll be talking about today is uh, Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book. Uh, parallel, I'll also be talking about uh, Neil Gaiman's writing process and uh, so basically his podcast with Tim Ferriss. So to start with, uh, so when I was uh, when I was watching the podcast, uh, when I was watching his podcast with Tim Ferriss, so Tim Ferriss expressed his love for Neil Gaiman's book, uh, the Graveyard Book. Okay, so uh, after that, I realized that okay, I'll I'll give it a try. So that was a time when when I was in the when I was in the middle of books. So I thought okay, let's give this one a try, and. Uh, so uh, to sum it up, uh, it it's it's a it's a children's book. It's a children's book, and the premise is pretty simple. The premise is as simple as uh, the chosen boy, villains, saviors. It's the uh, three things that uh, that are that that, that are, are pretty common in a, in 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 almost all fantasy uh, stories. So so I don't want to spend so much time of talking about the story per se but i want to talk about uh, how uh, mr gaiman approached uh, the story and uh, i want to talk about some of his writing principles that uh, that are uh, that are worth you know exploring that are worth uh, uh, giving it a thought giving a thought of, thought about now uh, coming 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 to the book the prose is lit the prose is really good the prose sounds like a uh, a genuine storytelling uh, experience uh, so it sounds like you are listening to a story that that that's being narrated by your by your grandma so that that's that's how uh, the narration goes and the characters in the story are pretty uh, pretty pretty one sided there is no there is no layers there is no complexity in the story and there are uh, there are no plot twists there are no uh, there are no like you know uh, and I, we have to also comment that there are no cringe worthy moments also in the story that's a big plus for for, uh, for any book and uh, and yeah, as a whole if you want to know about the story it's it's a story about uh, a 3 year old kid uh, who uh, who escapes or uh, who uh, who escapes from the claws of a, of a killer who managed to kill his mother, father, and his sister, and this guy uh, is is named Nobody Owens. So he escapes. He crawls away from the house and enters a graveyard, and where uh, the graveyard people, the dead people of the graveyard, takes him in on uh, on Nobody Owens' mother mother's words, and they takes they take they they takes him in and the nobody uh, nobody owns uh, starts growing up in the graveyard that's how the story starts but as the story progresses we get to know that uh, the threat to the boy's life is not yet fit, not yet uh, cleaned up and uh, there are still some forces that are out there trying to get to him that's the uh, conflict now the way that uh, Nobody Owens uh, comes out of this conflict is is not that interesting, but it's not that boring as well. So there are certain elements in the book which sounds really uh, innovative, like uh, uh, like the all, all the uh, all the graveyard uh, all the graveyard. So I, I can't I can't say much about them because if you uh, because if you if you read them for the first time, you'll you'll get a, you'll get sort of a thrill while reading them. So I leave it. I leave those elements out. But the, there are there are there are some very good elements that are there in the book. When when you read them, you'll actually you'll you'll you'll, you'll, um, you'll find a smile on your lips. Okay. That being said, there are uh, nine, the climax block where uh, the final showdown between Nobody Owens and the killer. That's actually a pretty good uh, uh, the pre- pretty good block, pretty good chunk of storytelling. Which uh, throws light on uh, what was hap- what's happening in the graveyard, and what what happened with his life, and who the who who are the people that are that are out there to get him. Okay, that's it. I want to st- uh, the so I want to stop the uh, uh, my my take on the story here. But as a whole, I think 
if you are someone who who likes uh, this cliched fantasy books with sort of a fresh twist fresh perspective on it probably may like it i personally did not like it but yeah that's uh, i think uh, that's about it for the book but again uh, so um, i want to talk about uh, anil gaiman's approach to writing so mostly i'll, I'll take a, uh, next 30 seconds on this so one of the one of the major takeaways that i had while listening to uh, the podcast was um, i think even i wrote it and uh, placed it on my table which says uh, you can write you can do nothing but you are not allowed to do anything else while you are like in your in your in your writing workplace right so that's actually very profound when you think about it because uh, writing is all about your patience with yourself so if you lose your patience with yourself you end up doing something else and if you end up doing something else you don't write so that's as simple as that and i think uh, giving permission to yourself to not write to not do anything is actually a solid uh, a psychological exercise that uh, that i think every writer should ad- adapt and there are some uh, so one of the things that i really liked about neil gaiman's work is um, and this, this this is my first book of neil gaiman but i i watched the sandman which i was pretty impressed uh, but uh, so there is some distance with uh, so uh, there is some there is very large dist- distance between me and fantasy books i the only fantasy books that i read are harry potter and probably lord of the rings and there are so many books that have stopped in the midway because i don't i don't like them i don't like them because you um, see we we crave for something freshness right so when you give the same story bottled up in in a, uh, you know, in a, in a different wrapper we don't we, we can easily see through them right so for example the dance of the thieves it was highly rated i i i stopped it in the middle i don't like it and um, there was one more thing it's called uh, uh the uh, six of crows yeah th- that that four book series i i have read two of them but i not i not finished them so so uh for me to do a fantasy fantasy novel it should be as good as harry potter right mm, i don't i don't remember reading anything else in 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 any good fantasy books yeah i think I, this i'm going off the topic here probably yeah uh, this is my uh, uh my uh, thoughts on uh, neil gaiman's um, the graveyard book which is my first neil gaiman's and probably um, I, i don't think i'm not looking forward to reading any more of neil gaiman's probably I'll, i'll be waiting for the sandman season 2 i think that's it thanks